Hi, this is Mrs. Often, and I'm here to review with you using laws of exponents. There's a few basic laws of exponents that you should know. First of all, if we have the same base and we're multiplying two of the same base that have exponents, we can simplify that by keeping the base the same and adding the exponents together. If we're dividing two of the same base and each has an exponent, we can keep the same base and subtract exponents. Of course, any base, two, three, pi, negative square root of three, raised to the zero power is going to be equal to one. Now do keep in mind zero to the zero power is not equal to one. It's still equal to zero. If we have what's called power to a power rule, so I have two things that are being multiplied here inside of parentheses, and that entire expression is being raised to the b power. I'm going to simplify this as x to the b power and y to the a times b, so multiplying those exponents. If I have x to the negative a, that means that I have 1 divided by x to the a power. And finally, I have the power of a quotient rule. Here's x to the a divided by y to the b. It's all being raised to the m power. So I have x to the a times m power divided by y to the b times m power. So those are the laws of exponents that we're going to be using. In our first one, we're just going to be simplifying some expressions here. So I have 2 times 3x to the third raised to the second power. The second power is only going to apply to 3 and to x to the third. So I'm going to have 2 times 3 squared times x to the 3 times 2 power. 3 squared is 9, so my final answer will be 18x to the 6. Okay. In our next example, we're going to be using power of a quotient. So I have y to the third, z to the fourth, times x to the negative two, divided by the expression y to the negative three, z to the fifth, x squared. What I'm going to do here is first do y to the three minus negative three times z to the four minus five times x to the negative two minus 2. Overall, 3 to the 3 minus negative 3 is going to be y to the positive 6. That will stay in the numerator. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. That tells me that z, you can write to the first power, but you don't have to, will go in the denominator of the fraction. And negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. So that x to the fourth power will also go in the denominator of the fraction. Up here, I have a product. Now, I have a lot of students ask me, Ms. Softin, what should I do with that 3 and 4? Do I multiply them together? Do I just leave them as they are? Well, of course, you should multiply them together. This whole expression is multiplication, multiplication, and more multiplication. So we're going to multiply the numbers together first. And I'll write that just as a reminder that you should multiply them together. Then I have m to the fifth times m to the negative first. So m to the five plus negative one and that's going to be m to the fourth power. 3 times 4 is 
12. So my final answer is 12 times m to the fourth power. And then my final example, I have this big mess here inside of parentheses. Now I can look at this, x squared times e to the third over y to the fourth, and think about, can I reduce this at all? But then I look outside the parentheses and I say, hey, this is all raised to the zero power. If this whole expression is raised to the zero power, it really doesn't matter what this is equal to. Overall, it's just going to be equal to 1. So that's some examples of simplifying using the laws of exponents. Now, we also need to be able to rewrite rational exponents effectively. Rational exponents can be written in one of two ways. We can write them as a rational expression, like this, x to the a over b power. Or you can write it using a radical expression, the bth root of x to the a power. So a is the power that that base x is being raised to, and b is called the root index. On your calculator, you may see something like y with the radical sign and then an x under it. This is the button that allows you to change the root index, so you can take the fourth, fifth, sixth root of a number. Keep in mind, for our purposes, b is always going to be a positive value. So I've just rewritten some things to let you see how this can look different. x to the one-fifth power is the same as saying the fifth root of x. 3 to the four-sevenths power is the same as saying the seventh root of 3 to the fourth, or the seventh root of 81. And if I have something raised to the one-half power, that is just the same as saying the square root of the number. So that's a really important thing to remember, that you can flexibly switch between rational exponents and radical expressions. Write it in the way that's most convenient for your solution of the problem. So let's look at some applications of this. Rational exponents, thank goodness, work just like integer exponents. So all those same laws of exponents we saw at the beginning of the video are going to apply here for all these examples. So please don't freak out that they involve fractions. The worst that can happen is you might need a common denominator to add those fractions. And that is, in fact, what we need in our first example. I have x to the 3 halves power times x to the 1 third. So I'm going to write this as x to the 3 halves plus one-third. Well, three-halves plus one-third. My common denominator is six, so I would have nine-sixths plus two-sixths. So my final answer is going to be x to the eleven-sixths. I'm going to leave my answer that way. I could write it as the sixth root of x to the eleventh. In problem number two, the same thing is going to happen. This exponent of three will be applied to both of the terms in the product in the parentheses. So I'll have two to the third times x to the two-thirds times three. Two to the third is eight. And two-thirds times three is just 2. So my final answer will be 8 times x squared. Up here, I have a quotient. Since I have two numeric expressions in the quotient, I want to divide these two numerals before applying this rule of subtracting the exponents. So I have 2 fourths is 1 half. Then to simplify this part, 
I'm going to do x to the 4 fifths minus 1 fifths. Now this is because I'm such a nice person, I decided not to have you work with unlike denominators here. So 4 fifths minus 1 fifth is just 3 fifths, so I have 1 x to the 3 fifth over 2. And that's my final answer. A lot of times though you'll probably see this written as x to the 3 fifths over 2. They won't write that 1 there. So here's my final answer for my problem. Okay, once again, anything raised to a zero power is going to be equal to 1. You can see in the expression I've written here, we have 3 times y to the fourth times the quantity x to the two-fifth power raised to the zero power. The only thing that is raised to the zero power is this x to the two-fifth. That part only is equal to 1. So I have 3y to the fourth times 1, or my final answer, 3y to the fourth power. So those are your rational exponents that work just like integer exponents. Just a couple more things to remind us about simplifying square roots. For a lot of you, this is going to be important for the SAT, and then maybe you can forget about it after that. But what you want to think of is factors. When I say think of factors, I'm really saying think of perfect square factors. What perfect square divides into um, a number like 82? So, and actually, just to make this a little easier on us, I'm going to change this to 84. Because I can think easily of a perfect square that divides into that. 4 divides into 84. And 4 is a perfect square, so I can rewrite this as 4 times 21. And then I think, what's the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2. 21, not a perfect square. Is there a perfect square that divides into 21? Unfortunately, no, there's not. So my final answer is going to be 2 times the square root of 21. Over here, I can do the same thing, breaking this up. So 12, I'll rewrite as 4 times 3. m squared is a perfect square. x cubed is not a perfect square, but I can write that as x squared times x using my laws of exponents. So now I'll look at everything that is a perfect square. It's going to come outside the radical. Square root of 4 is 2. The square root of m is actually the absolute value of m. Same thing for the square root of x squared. So I'm going to write 2 times the absolute value of m times x. All of these other terms that were not perfect squares are going to stay inside the radical. So 3, not a perfect square. x, also not a perfect square. So my final answer is 2 times the absolute value of mx times the square root of 3x. So that's simplifying square roots. And our final slide is rationalizing the denominator. Through most of your math classes, it has been very important to not leave a radical in the denominator. But how do you get that radical out of the denominator? Well, we'll use the same method that we've used for creating equivalent fractions. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by the radical sign. So I have square root of 3, multiply by square root of 3 in the numerator and the denominator. This gives me 5 times the square root of 3. In the denominator, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. So here I have something that has no radical sign in the denominator. 
I can do the same thing with my next expression, 6 radical 3 over 10, or over radical 10. I'll multiply the numerator and the denominator by radical 10. This gives me 6 times radical 30 over 10. Radical 10 times radical 10 is radical 100, which is 10. Looking at this fraction, 6 over 10 can be reduced. Both 6 and 10 are even numbers, so I'll divide both of them by 2. And I'll get 3 fifths. Now, radical 30, 30 is under the radical sign, so I can't reduce that. My final answer is going to be 3 radical 30 over 5. And that's what you need to know about working with exponents and radicals.